Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by ChampionNews.net. This is Carol Parisi. Our founder, Jack Roser, and myself have Aaron Rosh with us, Illinois expert on Common Core. Actually, you're becoming a national expert. You work with a lot of different folks from across the state. Before the break, we were talking about Arnie Duncan being head of the NEA. Arnie Duncan's from Illinois. He he's ran- the, I'm sorry, the Department of the um, Education on oh, the federal level. Thank you. Okay, so he's a <laughs> Department of Education. The NEA is the... The NEA is a whole other problem. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, anyway, from Chicago. Department of Education, we should say Department of Miseducation. Yes. Because they sure are doing a stinking job at a high cost. Well, so what, what Ernie Duncan wants to do is, you know, he he wants to, in a way, just flatten out all education. It's his way or the highway. Now all of our um, Catholic schools in Illinois are signing on to Common Core, and so is all the Lutheran schools. So what that means is that they've decided that education should all conform to this career in college ready. And what career? We don't know. They just call it a 21st century career. So what they're doing is they are micromanaging Illinois right now. In fact, right now, Illinois is being held hostage. We want um, a waiver from No Child Left Behind because our children will all fail this test and we will lose all of our federal funding at this point. So Arnie Duncan has us in a just a vice grip, and he's saying, you're going to do your schools my way with Common Core, full out the way I want it. They're negotiating back and forth because we know we're going to um, lose our federal funding. And then once they're satisfied that Illinois is being run the way the federal government wants it, then they'll say, okay, we're um, going to give you the No Child Left Behind waiver, and that way, even if your children fail the test, you still are eligible for your federal funding. It sounds like you know, there's way there, too there's much top-down direction There's a direction problem here. with naming it Common Core. Uh, <clears throat> some years ago, uh, I sponsored, provided the money for a location for a charter school in uh, District 59, which is Arlington Heights and Elk Grove, and uh, the teachers from there wanted to start the uh, Thomas Jefferson Core Curriculum uh, uh, thing, uh, uh, school, uh, the charter school. And uh, they actually did finally get that going, and my attorney fought that all the way to the Supreme Court of Illinois pro bono guy named John Duggan, a hell of a good attorney. And so those teachers did get their chance, but that got canceled as soon as uh, the next uh, Democratic governor uh, came in. He just, just boom, canceled that charter school. But that was a Thomas Jefferson core curriculum. Core curriculum was a name for an advanced school, a thing that would really mm-hmm. teach things and have standards. Right, people, Good standards, people higher standards. associate the way word core with the concept of the core, what we would call classic education, mm-hmm. but this is not a classic education. In fact, it strips away everything that you would consider a classic education. It's you know very, very math heavy, but it ends up putting your kids two years behind. And then they want to lower what's expected out of college. When they say college ready, they mean junior college, not an actual university. So that that gap, that um, in in essence, they're lowering everyone so that the gap in between high school and college is a more um, seamless transition. They're just saying, okay, fine, we know our kids don't aren't going to know advanced math, so let's just drop the idea that we would even expect it of them. So it brings math back about two years. Let me ask you a question: Education should not education be customized right. for the child. Everybody is different. That's right. Everybody is different. Everybody learns differently. Some children are auditory learners. It's got to be all the same for everybody. Right. Really, it'd be better if we all wore the same suits and dresses. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So they, they, it's, it's testing, standardized testing, which there's a lot of research on both ends. You know, as far as. You know, what is the, the value in teaching a child to be a really great test taker? Some Once you people, get a job, you don't take tests. You know something, quite quite honestly, some people just get testophobia right. and do not test well. They are quite brilliant, but just do not test right. well. Uh, more, more so, uh, well, uh, I've been banging away as I've been a skunk at a picnic uh, with the education system here in Illinois for at least 40 years, starting when I was at one time uh, head of a homeowners group in Arlington Heights. And uh, 
this whole thing has gone on and on. Uh, I've seen so much of it that uh, there's one conclusion I've reached is that uh, you got to quit fooling around with the Crayolas in the first three grades. You got to teach the kids something when they're at an age when they can be disciplined by a good teacher. I mean, a, a well-educated teacher is certainly going to be the one that dominates the classroom if you've told her she's got the right to do it. Well, right. Aaron, do and the, the teachers like Common Core? Or Jack's um, mentioning teachers. Do the there, teachers there, let like me, Common let me Core? Finish, let me finish the thought here. Is, is this. If you don't discipline children in the th first three grades, they're never going to get disciplined. And especially the boys are going to be very hard to keep in the seat. And uh, they're going to be, girls are more tractable and do better in school anyway. And, uh, but they're going to lose the boys totally. By the end of the first three grades, you better know how to read and write and do arithmetic mm -hmm. enough to get along. And uh, the fact of the matter is they don't do that. Uh, and these children are undisciplined Jack, and don't know the basics. Jack, we haven't done that for years. Basic That's right. reading, writing, and arithmetic. I mean, that yeah. has not been for years. I was going to school during all this new math and all this newfangled stuff. But, Aaron, back to my question. Do the teachers like Common Core? It has to make their job easier, no? Well, no. It's Like I said, it's just really the fundamental change of education. The teacher is now sitting at a computer the children are all on computers. The teacher is really just monitoring what they do on the computer. Now, I'm, I'll preface <clears> this by saying that Illinois can't afford <laughs> to um, even implement that this is high tech. This is meant to be moved towards a high tech school with government sanctioned materials on their tablets. And the teacher is monitoring the tablets. In fact, some of the tablets have cameras that look at the child and the teacher can see if the child's eyes straying or not and push a button and a little teacher pops up on their tablet and says, get back to work. Now, so this, the teachers are not able to, although I, they have a choice in their curriculum, it's all Common Core compliant material that they must use. Bill and no, Melinda Gates no, Foundation providing these computers? Let's something out. Hold it, hold it, hold it here. Uh, when you call it high tech, it's high tech equipment, it's not high tech education. There's a huge difference sticking fancy computers in the class, sticking cameras in there. That's all high tech. Right. But they're what using they're teaching very, the kids isn't. No, they're using very untested um, new methods of teaching. A lot of it is the opposite of what you were saying, Jack, with discipline. It's more a lot of people are picking curriculum that's Common Core compliant that is the kids are in charge. And the parents are, I mean, the um, teacher is merely like a counselor, a friend, guiding them. A lot of people are picking actually games that kids play in school, and the game is supposedly teaching them something. I did that with my kid when he was little. Mm -hmm. I would put him on the computer to play some of those math games. I mean, I'm talking four and five years old. That's not a bad thing. Right, but some of the things that they're picking, these books, these textbooks, the actual official recommended list is pornographic books about rape and incest. Are we there's, talking Perks of a Wallflower, perhaps? <laughs> no, The Bluest Eyes. Um, there's <laughs> other lessons that are about um, moral issues, like individuality. But the, the, the text material that they pick is very controversial and isn't actually about individuality. It's about vanity. So there's just a never-ending flow of things that parents are seeing in this Common Core approved curriculum that is very questionable and the teachers are able to pick this, it's on the computer. So as a parent, you're lucky to even know what your child's looking at because this is not the, we're out of the day and age where you can read their book or look at their papers. Erin, I know that um, up in Lake County, Lenny Jarrett, our editor for Champion News, there was an instance where the kid did a math problem, got to an answer, it was the wrong answer, and the teacher said it was okay. It's just how he got right. there. They're Is call that it, part of Common Core? Yeah, they're calling that critical thinking, that they're more concerned about the thought, thought process of the child than the actual answer. And um, this that is what they call arithmetic. critical th thinking. <laughs> but actually, when you look in the dictionary, crit critical thinking is supposed to mean picking, uh, analyzing, and finding what is factual and not factual. And answering a math question incorrectly is not critical thinking. That's non-factual. Math is a pretty <laughs> direct and to the point. 
it's not a philosophical topic to discuss. Right. One plus one is going to equal two in any realm. It is inappropriate ment for mental development to try to ask a child to do um, philosophical math analysis. They're supposed to be memorizing addition and subtraction in the lower grades. This is just developmentally inappropriate. Well, we have a lot more to hear from Aaron. I'm sure Jack's going to be ranting about some things as we come back after the break. Don't stay with, don't, don't go away. Stay with us. It's going to be a great show.